So a cell door opens, I walk out the cell, up the wing, and join the back of a queue. Everybody's queuing to go downstairs, two flights of stairs to the canteen area. So you're queuing, I'm keeping my nut down. I'm looking around for Tony and Don to see if they're coming out their wing. They ain't coming, but I'm still moving, keeping my nut down. Out of nowhere, you've got Moroccans that are just pushing past you and going straight to the front. They didn't give a fuck. This queue slowly makes your way into the canteen area where everybody is sat in their allocated seats. You've got the Russians over there, you've got Moroccans over there, you've got the Spanish over there, Romanians over there, any other nationalities are on a table over there at the back. So I'm walking downstairs, I've got, all I've got is my beaker, they've got a coffee machine. Don't even drink coffee, man, but I can't get no water, I can't get any, the only water I can get is out the tap, and the most fucked up thing about this, yeah, is that if you're forced to drink the water, the water is contaminated with Legionnaire's disease, and then go and look up Legionnaire's disease, it's like rusting of pipes, like stagnant water, and you're forced to drink that, if you got no money in there i had no money for like the first couple of weeks so you're just forced to drink this water man a coffee was paradise at this time yeah so i'm filling up my coffee and then you get a bread roll and it was actually nice and warm bread roll i gotta say freshly baked and you get a butter a little sachet of butter and a sachet of jam there's a table at the front i take my tray with my roll on there and my coffee and i go and sit down on it once i sit down i keep my that down everybody's looking at me staring me out and shit giving me evil eyes trying to suss me out who is this english little prick. Que gringo. Gringo. So I'm eating my bread roll. I look around and I see Tony and Don. They're queuing up. They get their stuff. They come down. We sat there together eating. I never knew the tension Don had towards Tony at this time. He blamed Tony for the situation and it all coming on top. I'll get to that further in the story. So I'm sat there with Tony and Don. Tony was six foot thick black hair, northern accent, late 40s, and then you had Don, who was an old Spanish man. Imagine this old Spanish Danny DeVito walking around in a suit all day around the yard. Grab a seat each, we walk out in the yard. You've got your Russians over there, you've got your Moroccans over there, Romanians over there, Spanish over there, other nationalities just walking around, doing circles around the yard. At the back end of the yard, you've got this like hut shelter thing, and you got, and that's where everybody's doing their heroin. To the right of that, you've got your showers, your outside showers, which is inside but it's outside in the yard so you shower out in the yard uh, we get to that so I walk around the yard and then out the blue these two lads from Birmingham approached us it was quite clear to me that these two brothers ran shit remember what I said about being at the top of the module they were at the top of the module had the two cells at the top of the module they had the whole module on lock they had weed they had mobile phones they had CD players cigarettes money you got given a card what you got money put on on the outside onto it. They had two of them. I think you were allowed 40 euros on each card a week. These boys had two of them each. You know, these boys were doing things. They had mad respect. Everybody was coming up to them, chatting to them. It was clear that they were the ones running shit. Ben was a couple of years, a few years older than me. He was about mid, he was about 25. Loved hip hop. Looked a little bit like Wayne Rooney. Uh, built like a brick shit house. And his brother was like a bigger, more rougher looking version and they were in there for four ton of hash and they got caught red-handed in the navy packing it and i knew that they were just about to get out so even though they made me feel safe in there i knew that i had to find my feet and find my own respect in there before they got out so tony and ed started becoming really close walking around the yard and this is when i started to know don's true feelings on how he felt on what had happened leading up to our arrest now i didn't really want nothing to do with this the fact that he was one of my dad's partners i felt like i had to take a back seat on whatever the fuck was going on between them so don then began to tell me his true feelings and what he was planning towards tony and because tony was a partner on my dad's i didn't want nothing to do with it i wanted to keep out of it don respected that he respected that but the thing is he had a major advantage over tony in that is that he spoke spanish he was a spanish man and he was loved very quickly he was loved in there and building an army with the moroccans see the moroccans went around all day trying to get cigarettes out of you dame un cigarro dame un cigarro give me a cigarette give me a cigarette all day long but they don't even smoke so what they do is they, they'll build a fresh deck up with all different types of fag until they got 20 and then trade it for a phone card to phone back home and he had a couple of quid what he came in with or went straight on his card so he had a little bit of dough he was slowly creating an army mate with these moroccans and don was an old he was like your granddad you know he was walking around with a, like with a suit all, all day he was poisoning tony's name around the whole prison he would sit there and talk to him and eat with him like 
there was nothing wrong. There was a sinister level there where I was pretty fucked up. I was starting to find my feet on the module. I didn't want to get moved to another module. Worse, a different prison. So that was always in the back of my mind. So the only way you could guarantee staying in the module was by getting a job. And lucky, Ben, he ran the cleaners. So instantly, I was the next up online to get a job, mopping. So as soon as someone went out, I was the next in line for the mopping job. So you're out in the yard for about, this, this was to, back in 2006. This was a long time ago, so I don't know whether things still happen like this, but you go out in the yard, you must come in. I think you come in at about one o'clock. You go for a siesta to about three o'clock. Ben walks me up to my cell. He gives me his Walkman for a couple of hours. Here, listen to that. He gives me a sleeping pill and he goes, here, take that. And I was like, fucking sweet. You know what I mean? I could, I could, do, I really needed to sleep at this time. And it was hard to get to sleep. So yeah, sweet. So now I'm feeling a bit more chilled. I walk into my cell. There's the pedo geezer at the bottom. Don't even say nothing to him because I'm already hearing things about him on the yard anyway. So I walk in there, jump strap up on my top bunk on my, on my mattress, my foam mattress, which was three quarters of a mattress because I had to rip half of it off and use that bit as a pillar because you weren't given no pillar. All you was given is a sheet. One fucking sheet, man. It was like July, heart of July or something. So it was like hot of the summer. It was the World Cup. I was in the whole of the World Cup in 2006. Bosch the sleeping pill. Carlos comes walking in the cell. Tienes papeles. He's like, have you got papers? I was like, papers? What do you mean papers? And he just pulled out this rock of hash. Fuma? Smoke? I was like, fucking sweet. Yeah, 100%. I ain't got no papers though. So he goes to his camel packet. So he had a 20 deck camel packet. He rips out the metal paper bit out of it. Yeah, you know the bit with the foil and the paper bit. Soaks it in water in the sink. Puts it together like that and blows it to separate the paper from the foil bit and you couldn't get a perfect to Rizla. Goes to the bottom of the cell door and you've got a gap like that in the bottom of the cell door. Leaves something on top of it for about 30 seconds and it's bone dry, ready to smoke. Bang, bang, we're smoking a couple of hits on the doobie. I'm trying to speak with him Spanish. Still trying to suss him out, but one thing I did notice about Carlos is he knew everybody. He was floating about here, he was floating about there, doing deals there, doing deals there. He was a handy person to know. He knew everybody and everybody seemed to love him. And it's Sleeping pill kicks in. A couple of hours later, you're woke by the cell door opening again. So I know the procedure now. So I'm not quite as scared. I know what's going on. Carlos walks straight out, goes for his business. So this time you go straight down, you go straight out into the yard. If I remember rightly, you go straight into the yard. So I'm walking around the yard on my own. I thought I'd do I thought I'd do a couple of laps around there. So I've gone past the, the heroin jacking part. As I'm walking along the wall, I see this Spanish geezer getting chased by this massive Spanish fella. Got him up against the wall and was just beating the shit out of him, man. I was just like whoa walk forward walk forward that was the first bit of real little bit of violence i see on the first day but it weren't really nothing bad we're sitting there we're chatting we're all getting to know each other telling us the ropes showing what's what and then we get called in at about five o'clock you line up your head counted and then you single file one by one go into the canteen again to pick up your food and i've got to be honest with you the food weren't that bad. There was a couple of fish bone soup days and stuff like that. But I'm telling you, man, sometimes you had a nice bit of paella, uh, a nice pork chop. There was some ropey days, I ain't gonna lie to you, but the food weren't that bad. You just don't know what the fuck was in it, you know, but you ain't thinking about that, you're eating. This is what I had to do. Well, I had no money, I just had to roll with it. So I'm sat there eating my food and I noticed that these big table of Romanians in front of me and they were big steroided up motherfuckers. You could tell they were steroids because they had all the spots all over them, man. But they were working out all day and there's a whole fucking mad story with this gang of Romanians. This one gang of Romanians anyway. One of the main ones, he weren't the biggest fella. But you could tell we had a lot of influence within the gang. He was just staring at me like that. And I could feel the stare. And then he goes, pointed to my earring. This is the exact earring I had in 2006. The exact one stayed with me, never took it out. And he was pointing to it like he wanted it. How are you gonna get out of my earring unless I give it to you? At this time, I was like a little bit, felt like I was firmed up with Ed and Ben at this time. They were running shit, so I knew I weren't gonna have no problems, but I was still finding my feet. Thought, oh, I've got to deal with that. They're gonna approach me, maybe try and rip me earring out. I don't know. But really, I shouldn't have been wearing the fucking thing. So we sat down, we're eating Tony and Don to my left and to my right. And at this time, Don did not trust Tony or anything he was saying about a lawyer. What lawyer to have, how much it's gonna cost, who's gonna pay for it on the outside. But we needed a lawyer now. We needed it. The tensions were growing between these two boys. I was trying not to get involved. I was hoping my, my dad was sorting things on the outside. But the tension between these two was growing out of control. At this point, Don wanted him dead. And I never knew how far he was gonna take it. But he was building an 
army in there. And that's when I started seeing what Don was planning with the Moroccans. The army that he was building, I knew that this could get out of control quick. 